Hey guys, welcome to the homestead. I want you to get a load of this. Mm, 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 mm. So good. So good. Yeah. Uh, that just looks so good. Hey guys, welcome to the homestead. Glad you're here today. Uh, today we're gonna do a walkthrough on my Singer Treadle sewing machine. This is a fourth or, depending on how you look at it, fifth generation Singer in my family. This was originally owned by my great-grandmother and now my children's great-great-grandmother. But before we get into a little bit of that history and how I think that's just amazing, uh, let me give you a little bit of information on this machine. A lot of people are kind of shocked to discover, as I was, that these really aren't worth a whole lot of money. They're beautiful antiques, and people just love having them in their homes. And I think one fits really well here on an off-grid homestead. But the reality is, there were so many of these things made. One of the factories alone that Singer used to make these machines produced 36 million total machines. 36 million. In fact, the year before this one was made, in 1913, this one you can tell by the serial number when it was made, the year before this was made, that same factory produced 1.3 million in a single year. That's just one factory. So you can understand why these just aren't worth a lot because things that are worth a lot of money, things that, uh, antiques that are valuable, are valuable because they're rare. And this just isn't rare. There's lots of these hanging around. If you pay more than about $600 for one, it better be in like mint condition you know, straight out the factory. And in fact, $600 sometimes people see it, people say online is way too much. So between five and $600 for a very pristine machine. This one is in great, it looks fantastic. It's in great working order. Um, I have adjusted the belt on it to tighten it up a little bit. It does function, functions well. I have um, done a little bit of care and cleaning on this. You wanna be very careful when you clean these. You're never to use any cleaner on the outside of the machine because the decals are very fragile. And any sort of cleaner, even light cleaners, can take these decals off. And so what they say and what they suggest is you should go ahead and just kind of lightly wipe it down with like a wet cloth or, um, and then after that's done, after all the dust is gone, go ahead and remove, uh, get a piece of machining oil, like the type of oil that you would put on like hair clippers and put that on a, like a cloth and wipe it down. And it shines, it shines beautifully. Uh, anyway, so I've got all that taken care of. I oiled the insides, everything is running like a champ. And so what we're gonna do today is go ahead and thread this machine. But first, a little bit of information about the Singer. Because I think a lot of people don't realize, you know, this was a huge, a very tumultuous time in an industry that was normally dominated by men. Uh, in fact, one of the first, very first uh, factories where sewing machines, not singers, but sewing machines were manufactured was burned to the ground because tailors thought that their industry was at stake and they thought they would all be on the unemployment line if these things were created. I'm just a poor tailor. And tailors, most of them were men. And so all these men got together, these tailors, and they burned this factory to the ground because they were worried about their industry and their jobs. Very interesting fact. Singer, Isaac Singer, when he created the Singer um, uh, sewing machine, a little, an earlier version of this one, back in the 1800s, was originally sued because someone said, hey, you stole my, you stole my patent, you stole my idea. And in fact, Isaac Singer did in fact steal someone else's idea for a sewing machine. But his reasoning that he presented to the court was that the guy I stole it from stole it from somebody else, which is true. But the court decided that Isaac Singer had to pay the other guy money because the guy who originally stole it from did not never file the patent. The guy who originally created the idea for the lock stitch method that this machine use, uses never filed a patent and then yes someone stole it from him and Isaac Singer stole it from that guy. <laughs> so it's pretty interesting. Also interesting to note another tidbit of information was that Isaac Singer always used women in his advertising and up until this point tailors and um, people who worked and worked on clothing were mostly it was a men dominated industry a man dominated industry. You are just a poor tailor! And he used women in his advertising, and because so many of the tailors were skeptical of the technology 
and the machines and thought it would be difficult, thought it would be crazy. So Isaac Singer used women as a way to show the women, or show the men, the men tailors, hey, it's so easy, even a woman can do it. Well, because of his advertising and because it was so effective and it showed women in such a positive light that so many women flocked to these machines and they began using them and then quickly, very quickly, this became, this became a woman-dominated industry and not, it was no longer a man's dominated industry. But interesting fact about that, uh, and not to mention that Isaac's affinity for women went outside the workplace. He, he fathered 24 children. I thought that was interesting too. Anyway, so let's get this thing threaded. Um, if it were not for so many good YouTube videos out there, I would have never figured this out. Not in a million years. And the instruction manual that I have was for an electronic one that came with this one for some reason. I don't know where it's at. Yeah, here it is. Um, came with a, a, a manual, but it's for a number 99 electric sewing machine, Singer. So not this version. This was the treadle off-grid sewing machine. And um, we'll see if I can get this threaded. <laughs> So there you go, 100 years old, made in 1914, over 100 years old, and it's still doing great. So the backstory of this is that my great-grandmother, her name was Helen, she moved over here from Germany with her family when she was a little girl, and then uh, she met her husband named Joseph, and they got married, and I don't know at what point they acquired this machine. I don't know if it first belonged to her mother when she first moved here from Germany, or if um, she bought it after she was married, I have no idea how that worked. All I know is that she had this, this was hers, she used it, and um, it was passed down from her to my grandfather and his wife, and then from my grandfather to my father, and I just received it recently. So basically four generations, and if my sons and maybe their wife uses it, or if I ever have a daughter one day, maybe it'll pass down to her and it'll be in its fifth generation in our family. So that's really neat to think about. But anyway, yeah, it's a neat machine. It's fantastic looking. It works fantastic. And I think we'll get some more years of use out of this. And I think it's really amazing that, you know, did my grandmother ever think that her great grandson or maybe even her great grandson, great, great grandson or great, great granddaughter might use this machine one day? Pretty cool piece of history for a family. All right. If you have a singer in your family, which there's a lot of them out there, go ahead and leave a comment below. I want to know what model you have. How old is it? Is it electric or is it a treadle? Uh, give me some insights. If you see anything that you want to recommend for this machine uh, for me, then go ahead and put that in the comments below. Uh, it did come with a number of attachments. I have no idea what these are for. 
and it would be kind of hard to um, figure that out by your comments. But if you know a place on YouTube that talks about the old treadle sewing machines and the attachments that comes with it or that work with it, if there's a place online where you can direct me to go to, leave a comment about that in below uh, in the comment section so that I can learn a little bit more about these attachments and accessories that came with the machine. So I appreciate that. Also, be sure to check out our Teespring merchandise, teespring.com. Our Stupid Should Hurt shirt is absolutely our best seller. We're selling these things like hotcakes. And if you want a Stupid Should Hurt shirt, go ahead and pick one up at teespring.com. Link in the description below. All right, after that, See you next time in the homestead. Bye. Hey, before you go, we got to try out this amazing smelling bread that smells so good. It's going to taste so good, too. Let's take a taste. Mmm, this is raw milk butter that we make here on the homestead every week. So good. Mmm. Our neighbor's cow... We get milk from our neighbor's cow and we turn that cream into butter. Mm. Mm. So good. Listen, I'll do you all a favor. I'm going to put my favorite bread recipe down in the description below. If you're interested in making the best bread, artisan style looking bread. It's nice and crusty on the outside. Perfect crumb in the middle, very soft. Check out the link in the description below on how to make Zach's favorite bread. All right guys, see you next time in the homestead, bye. Hey guys, I'm happy to introduce an American homestead sponsor, Zervita Zeal. Now, first off, I only accept sponsors from products that I use and believe in. My family uses Zeal mainly because we want to ensure a healthy immune system. You see, it's made up of only whole food concentrates and includes no artificial colors, flavors, or preservatives. The included sweetener is all natural from fruit and the stevia leaf. It's gluten-free, it's vegan, and it's kosher. In 2018, my youngest son was involved in a bike accident that resulted in the surgical removal of his spleen, and that's an important part of his immune system. And because we live on a farm, you can guess that having a healthy immune system for our family is very important. Some of the included ingredients are beetroot, chicory root, turmeric, moringa, blueberries, cranberry, goji berry, milk thistle, ginseng, alfalfa, broccoli, and so much more. It's these natural ingredients that can easily be made into a powerful and tasty drink that my family can make and feel good about. So sign up and give it a try today. Every purchase you make goes to help the homestead so that we can continue to make great homesteading videos for you. Link is in the description below. Go ahead, give it a try. Hey guys, did you know you can become a patron of an American homestead? They get access to private videos and we send them gifts from the homestead that we make here on the homestead. And we also enter our patrons into special giveaways that are only available to them. And before you go, please check out these other great videos. Go ahead, click. Oh wait. <laughs>